Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah here from The Automator. And we had a, a client ask us if we could do a couple things. Uh, well, I'm gonna say they were using Chrome. Let's start there. And they're doing stuff mm -hmm. in YouTube. And in first off to start, it was interesting. It's like, yeah, there's a guy in Fiverr that basically they said they could do this. And I'm like, and I'm not knocking it, right? But people on Fiverr, nine out of 10 times are usually looking for images and clicking and sending their very simple stuff, right? And we both know, as I, as I know, when you try to automate Chrome, or I should say a browser, right? Any browser stuff, mm -hmm. except for IE, which used to be so easy, but now it's gone. Uh, yeah. It's it's really, really problematic, right? Like it, it's just That's image search. Certain, it's certain things. Because yes. browsers, you're constantly changing the sizes um, and everything. So we were like, you know, and, um, hey, go for it. You know, if that guy can do it for five bucks or 20 bucks or whatever, but like, boy, I wouldn't expect too much. That's not going to be. So in the end, we, we created a tool that is really reliable, right? So yeah, right so this now, part, what we wanted to do is yeah. to document the, the order and how you might change when you're going to go automate something in Chrome to a different approach, because it was a frustrating, you know, experiment. And honestly, what we've done, what, four or five projects, I'd say, for clients with Chrome, and like every time, it's just a, a beat it down. Is, it, is, it is a nightmare, but here's the thing, and I want to frame it a different way <laughs> as well. that's when you so know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and let me, let me, yeah, that's when, you, that's the thing, when you're doing something that is, um, uh, when you don't know about the pitfalls of what you're doing, you usually go with the simplest approach and oh. people say like, oh, dude, you did that so quickly. And I'm like, yeah, but you forgot about this, 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 this right. and that. You know? well, this is why I, and, and I that, still go IE, you know, I'm like, when I can do it in IE, it's so easy and reliable. And I'm like, yeah. no, do it in IE. I know yeah. everyone hates it as a browser, but it's so that's simple why. and reliable. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's, that's basically. But I wanted to kind of like I wanted to kind of rephrase or reframe what you said about yep. the video itself. One of the things that I want to show you here is why, um, whenever we say like we have to do a consultation about what you're asking, yeah, it you say but that should be free or that should be very simple or that should be very cheap, and I'm going to tell you no because sometimes I go about experimenting about what you said to try to find the best solution. And sometimes just experimenting is really complicated. So let me show you where, like real quick what I what I was thinking of and Our first in general, try to, yeah. And, and, and basically try to help you out avoiding this kind of stuff. Like don't do this, right? So the idea was that it would check where your mouse was positioned select a specific video on that and perform some actions on it on YouTube. That was the idea. So here's the complicated part. What is below my mouse? So I said, oh yeah, the Chrome class, we could access the DOM, okay? So here's the thing. We started with the Chrome class. As usual, I had some issues just starting it out because sometimes the Chrome class, there was a modification that we made on the Chrome class a right. while ago because something changed and it was not working. So I had to get it working. Then I went to the DOM enable and overlay, overlay set inspect mode. This allows me to get information about the elements that are on a web page and especially whatever is below your mouse. So that's my first thought, right? I have done it before and I said, oh, it's possible. I get the position below the mouse, get the node for the location. I'm doing great. But then I figure out the, the sizes or the locations that it's giving me back are off by a lot. And I'm like, why? <laughs> so I had to actually offset it. I had to also find out, I also found out that it's not reliable. Every time you put the mouse below an, a position, it was like the same image of the video, but if you put it at the top, it would give you the video, the image of the video. But if you put it just a little bit down, instead of getting the image, it was getting you the title of the video. It was something crazy. So it was extremely unreliable. And I, in the end, I was like, Joe, you know what? Uh, we should call this off. It's really complicated. It's more than uh, at the end, what he really needs we don't need to do that such a script and you told me like isn't there any other way and i'm like well yeah with javascript but how do i do that okay um we went ahead and used another tool to kind of like use a hotkey to run javascript 
because what we were trying to do, I couldn't have the thing open to run the JavaScript that I needed and see the results. So the tool was really good. It was the auto control right. the extension. extension. Yeah. It is a great extension, especially for this type of things like testing um, JavaScript with a hotkey. That was great. Like I, I was like, that's awesome. I tested it. And in the end, you see all this code here that relies also on um, an event that I had in here. Like it also relies on this code and so on. I switched all of that to just this piece of code here in which I have three JavaScript uh, variables and I just pass them as hotkeys. So it was really easy to do this instead. So that goes back, to, that brings back my idea of, okay, when you are trying to automate browsers, your first thought should be JavaScript, okay? Just do JavaScript, if possible. In this case, it worked. And there was something that I didn't know if it was possible, which is with JavaScript, get the element where you're hovering your mouse. I'm an old school soldier. <laughs> and at that time, we didn't have that. You couldn't, with JavaScript, get the hover item, the element itself. There are improvements, and now you can do that. But um, even if I wanted to know if it was reliable, because if I was getting the same issues as I was getting with the DOM elements, then it was gonna, not going to be good. But I would say, always try the JavaScript approach first. If you have knowledge on that, it would save you tons of times. If you can't, then go ahead and play with the DOM with the dev tools, because, because that's what I was using, the developer tools from the Chrome class. And yeah, then you would play with that because that usually takes a little bit longer to get it working as you want. Or you will have a few quirks that you might only notice when you're experimenting with it. <laughs> so yeah. Um, that would be my recommendation. And usually just experimenting might take a little bit longer than you might expect because there's some things that they go out of what you are normally doing, right? So yeah, that's what I that's what I wanted to kind of like share today. Yeah, and the other thing I would add into it, which is you know, you alluded to it, but we we happen to Start off with the Chrome class from Geek Dude in automating Chrome and working with it. Then we switched over to Auto Control, which is that Chrome extension. Um, and mm -hmm. then I, I said, like, you know, which you, I think you had already done at that point, but I, I hadn't talked to you. And I said, did you, you know, can we port it back into Chrome so it's all an auto hotkey? I already had it, yeah. Like, yeah, you know, well, that's what you did. But here's the thing, like, we could have just started out with auto control and left it there because it was in this case right. it was just simple. I want to hit a hotkey and I wanted to do something, and we could have just that's right used auto hotkey at all, right? And that's right. And yeah, it, totally. It's uh again, it was like in the one of the points being, and this is where you know way more about this than I do because I haven't even programmed in Chrome in the stuff forever, right? Is uh I know from talking to you that connecting to the Chrome instance and stuff, it's because of how it was done, because of what's available if, with AutoHotKey, it can be buggy, right? In that sense, if it gets stuck in a loop or something, right? That it, it'll Yeah, just... yeah, exactly. So the Chrome class has this thing that it, it, ex, it expects an answer from the Chrome instance. Mm -hmm. And if that answer doesn't come, it just loops in it. And it just kind of like, uh, I, ha I have had this issue yeah. enough to notice it. It's right. not that it's always there, right. but it happens enough to for me to say, oh God, I have to restart the program again because it hanged. Right. Yeah, you know? to it, whatever. So, yeah. yeah. So I, I did some modifications to try to come back that, but it's still right. there. So right. But and that's where my point is with auto control, you're actually connecting to that um that without a problem, right? It's it shouldn't right. be yes, problem. because it's an extent it's, it's an extension running on the on the instance. Uh -huh. So it's not the same as what I'm trying to do, which is Auto hotkey connecting to an instance, the extension is already in that instance. So they are in the same environment. Right. That's what happens. Yeah. So yeah. And that's why, you know, maybe for now until, and I know if I remember right, YouTube was working on something to do have a better way to connect to Chrome. Um, yeah, who I knows think, when I that'll be available. Yeah. 
but and I know talking to Tank as well, he, he when I showed him auto control, he got really excited. He's like, oh my God, we could, you know, someone could build an extension easily that could allow auto hotkey to kind of do what auto control is doing and borrow from the work they've done. He's been really busy, so I don't think he's actually worked on it. But again, hopefully mm -hmm. at some point we'll have something like this because it's not that you automating Chrome itself is horrid. It's just how we connect to it at currently is, you know, problematic. That is also a very big issue. Yeah, that's right. Awesome. Well, thanks, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, and we have a whole series of videos from Geek Dude actually teaching us how to use the Chrome class. Also, if you were interested in that. And at some point, I was telling Isaiah, I want to make some videos on the auto control thing, just to showing because which is I know he got excited when, when, when I was showing him, like, look, here's the GUIs. But yeah, that was like, oh, point to a JavaScript God. file. Right. Like you can you can load either you can load it from memory or you can save it as a JavaScript file. So we can use auto hotkey to write to a JavaScript file and then have this auto control do it. Right. So it's another way that we can still use yeah. auto hotkey and automate Chrome. And the auto control functionality can be triggered from a hotkey. So of course in auto hotkey, we send the hotkey to the auto control thing to go read and do its work. So it's a it's a kind of a nice workaround. That is right. Might be a nice for simpler stuff. Like this is a we're not ripping thousands of pages, right? I wouldn't probably use auto control for no, that. No, exactly. I have wouldn't do no. I, that, that's not the purpose of it, right? <laughs> awesome. That's All right. right. Thanks, but you're welcome.